Hello everybody, I'm Jack and welcome to this channel which is all about elevating your guitar playing. In today's lesson we will talk about intervals. What are intervals? How do I find them on the neck? How do I visualize them on one string? How do I visualize them by looking at them to the left or to the right? Well, actually how to visualize them in general. But I will also give you something that a lot of people don't know. It's not really a secret, but a lot of players don't know it. So you better stick till the end because I'm giving that thing at the end. So what are intervals in general? An interval is actually a distance. It's a distance between a starting point and an ending point, between the first note and a second note. Meaning, if I'm starting from this G note here on the E string, and I'm ending on this C note on the G, on the E string as well. I'm playing a certain distance between the first note, the G, and the last note, the C. And this distance has a name. We will be covering all of that together. By the way, if I play two notes at the same time together, for instance, this G note and the C note together, this is called a harmonic interval. Harmonic, harmony chords. If I'm playing two notes one after another, this is called a melodic interval. Melodic melody. Let's start first by visualizing those intervals on one string. Remember, every interval, meaning every distance, has a name and we'll be giving those uh, distances names in just a couple seconds. You don't really have to think about why we call them this way for now. Let's just accept the terminology as is. I didn't choose it and nobody chose it. It's like that. And remember, stay till the end because unless you're an advanced player, you might not know what I'm going to share with you. And quite frankly, you're not an advanced player. I'm just messing with you. Of course you are. And if you're not, you will be thanks to this channel, right? Of course. And also don't forget to pick up the chart for this lesson. You can find it in the link below. That way you could follow more easily and you'll have um, you know, a handout you can visually look at while following the lesson. So let's pick a starting point. The starting point will be the G note on the E string. If I go up one fret, and I play the G sharp note, the distance between the G note and the G sharp note is called a minor second. Easy stuff. If I go up two frets from the starting point, I arrive to the A note, which is two frets above the G note. One, two. The distance between the G and the A note is called a major second. Kind of like... Let's keep doing that. So if I go up three frets from the G note, one, two, three, this is called a minor third. If I go up four frets, it's called a major third. If I go up five frets from the G note, one, two, three, four, five, this is called a perfect fourth. Six frets above the G note, one, two, three, four, five, six, is called a tritone, or we can call it an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth. But like I said at the beginning of this lesson, just use the terminology as is. Don't ask questions. I'm joking, you can always ask questions in the comment section below and I'll answer you. All right, so seven frets from the G note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is called a perfect fifth. Eight frets from the G note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is called a minor sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is called a major sixth. Ten frets above the G note is called a minor seven. Eleven frets above the G note is called a major seven. And twelve frets above the G note is called an octave which is the same note as the first G, but just an octave higher, meaning higher in pitch. I should also mention that we're only going to cover the intervals up to one octave in this lesson. So we will not move beyond the 12 uh, fret thing. 
However, if you want to do this, just know that the, the notes keep repeating, meaning when I, I get to the, the G note an octave higher, the fret after this one on fret uh, 16 is a G sharp, just like the G sharp I found on fret number four, but only an octave higher. All right, amazing. Now that we've covered those distances and those intervals, and we've covered their names, we can start visualizing them on the fretboard, in all areas of the fretboard. Intervals are very, very important for you to recognize by ear because it would help you to transcribe songs by ear and it will help you write melodies as well. Also, it will help you visualize the notes on the fretboard and it would also help you discover things that we will talk about at the end of this lesson. As I said before, this is a minor second, this is a major second, now this is a minor third. So this minor third could either be played to the right or to the left. If I want to play this to the left, the minor third will be here. If you don't really want to think about them and you already know, let's say, the major scale, So all you have to do is count two, three, one, two, three, and go back one fret. Now you have a minor third. A major third could be played this way, or could be played this way. You can find the major third on the right if you play a major scale in a three note per string shape. That's it. And you can fight it on the left if you play a major scale in its uh, standard shape. That's a major third. Now for the perfect fourth, we'll just play it as is because as you can see, it's right below the, the G note. And it's the same thing all over the neck, meaning if I play the G note here, I'll find the C just below it. Except, of course, when we're playing something between G and B. In this case, we always have to move one fret up any note that is on the B string. You see, I move the C note up one fret. Other than that, the perfect fourth is always below the root note. The root note, which is the starting note. All right, a tritone. A perfect fifth kind of like a power chord shape. Now, if you want to find the perfect fifth on the, uh, on the left, in this case, since I'm playing a G, I'm playing an open uh, D string. But in the example, for instance, of a A, you'll find the perfect fifth two strings up, three frets below. <laughs> All right, now for a minor sixth, That's how I can find it. Again, on the, on the right, I use the, um, the three note per string pattern. If you don't know it, that's fine. By the way, if you don't know it, that's fine. Just follow along. Now on the left, it looks like a minor third, but we just skip one string. Major sixth. If you don't want to do this extension, you can play it, of course, on the left. Minor 7, since it's just below the G note, we just got to skip one, one string. That's the only way I'm going to give it <laughs> to you today. And then the major 7 and the octave. Let's take the example on the A note, that way you can see it. I skip two strings, and then uh, it's uh, one, two, three, three frets down. And remember, the same shapes, you can find them everywhere, except, of course, if I'm dealing with the G and B string. You always have to move a fret up. So for the secret that I wanted to share with you, of course, it's not a secret, but most 
people don't realize what they're doing when they're playing chords. For instance, if we're playing the G chord, D chord, A minor, B minor, any major or minor chord, people don't realize that these chords are actually intervals. Like I said at the beginning of the lesson, they are harmonic intervals because we're playing several notes at the same time. Well, here's the thing. In order to play a major chord, all I have to do is pick the starting note, for instance the G, add on top of this G a major third. In this case, a major third would be the B note on fret 7. Like I showed you before, we can either play it on the right or on the left. We're going to play it on the left. So that's a major third. You also play a perfect fifth. A perfect fifth, starting from the root note, would be the D note. And there you go. That's how the G major chord was constructed. And same thing for a minor chord. What we do is we pick a starting point. Let's suppose the A note on fret 5. On top of this A note, we're going to play a minor third. So a minor third, in this case, will be the C note. Because it's 1, 2, 3. 3 frets above. And also, we want to add another note, which is the perfect fifth. A perfect fifth, in the, ca in the case of the uh, A note, would be the E note. And therefore, we get this A minor chord. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And believe me, this will change everything for you. It will change the way you see improvisation. It will change the way you see scales, songs, chords, everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, you're going to enjoy it, guys. Come on. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the lesson, share it with a friend. And of course, you got to check out the lesson here, somewhere here. What are you waiting for? Just subscribe and click on this lesson. Let's go. Let's go.